You are a Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta, your team every day. And hello and welcome in to the Locked On Braves postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. We're happy to have you with us after what was a pretty good weekend for the Atlanta Braves, who were able to find the runs they needed on Sunday to take two out of three from the Seattle Mariners to start out a 10-game homestand with a series victory. we got all kinds of great stuff to talk about, including the best start of Jared Schuster's young career, some clutch hitting by his battery mate, and of course a little preview for a series against a club that you might have heard the Braves have been a little bit of a, a rival with over the past few years. The Los Angeles Dodgers, they're in next. Before we get started with all that, though, I want to remind you to subscribe to Locked On Sports Atlanta right here on YouTube, and make sure you click the bell to get notified every time we drop a new episode, and subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Uh, Jake, I think this was a pretty good Sunday for the Braves, and I don't know that there was a bigger highlight or something that was more needed and nicer to see than the performance of Jared Schuster. Yeah, no, I, definitely one of the biggest performances of the year. I think so far when you consider the Braves coming off a bullpen game, they needed him to give them six innings. And uh, yeah, a, a fantastic performance. Obviously a big confidence boost for him as well. Yeah, and I think confidence is a big part of success and having gotten a little bit of experience, I think that kind of lent itself. And the start against the Rangers was a, a helpful step along the way. But this one against Seattle, a very good outing for Jared Schuster. We'll talk all about it in a moment. Let's go through the line scores of game number 46 for the Braves. Mariners taking the loss, dropping to 22 and 24, under 500 on the year. They got two runs on just three hits, both those runs on solo homers. Three men left on base for them. The Braves, meanwhile, 29 and 17, best record in the NL. That's three runs, seven hits, no errors, five men left for Atlanta. Jared Schuster, the winner, now one and two, his first major league victory. Let's go ahead and congratulate him for that. That is the first of what the Braves hope will be many. And George Kirby took the loss despite pitching pretty well himself. Five and three now on the year. Marcel Iglesias, third save of the season. Game a brisk two hours and five minutes. Sellout crowd, 40,213 paid to see it. And Jake, anybody that's here that doesn't have to pay to watch the Braves postcast uh, would be happy to hear about Jared Schuster and his start. So let's dive in. Six innings, one hit, one run. It was a solo home run, one walk, seven strikeouts. I mean, I think everybody was hoping that he would be able to cover some innings because, like you mentioned, that bullpen game is something that puts a tax on Atlanta's relief core, and they have, uh, I think, several days to try to dig out of that. But, wow, Jared Schuster, just the best start of his young career at a time in which the Braves needed it most. Yeah, again, and I don't want to you know, go back and talk too much about Saturday's game, but I know we didn't get a chance to cover it. But in these bullpen games, that is one of my biggest issues with it is that it really taxes your bullpen for mm -hmm. several days after. So that's why it was so huge for Jared Schuster to come out there and give you six solid innings. And just what a, a great performance. 29 sliders, 29 forcing fastballs, 27 change-ups. I mean, yeah. he was mixing it up about as evenly – as you can working very efficient was working to some on rate or listening to some of it on radio and heard Joe talking about the fact that this looked like the Jared Schuster we saw in spring training, who was mm -hmm. in a rhythm. He was getting there throwing, you know, just dominate or in the strike zone, pounding the yeah. strike zone, the guy that we, you know, were teased with in spring training a little bit. So this was great to see. You mentioned the walk also hit about it as well. Braves could not get out number nine hitter for Seattle for a reason on, on Sunday, but yeah, other than that, give up the solo home run. I mean, again, I, I can't think of too many bigger performances because now we kind of expect it from Bryce Elder, but you know, when you, with the starting rotation, the way that it is for Jared Schuster to come out here and do what he did on Sunday to help the Braves win this series and now set them up for hopefully a big week at home against a couple of other really good teams. I mean, it was absolutely huge for the Braves. Yeah, I know the bullpen game, and we're not covering all that right now, but then the start of Jared Schuster, those decisions to go that route and push Charlie Morton back to Monday, allowing him, Spencer Strider, and Bryce Elder to throw against the Dodgers, that was all part of, I think, a bigger plan. And while I don't think anybody wants to see too many more bullpen games this year, especially not in the month of May, that's never a time that you want to be doing those. I think they are happy to see that Jared Schuster was able to answer the call for his team. 88 pitches, 67 strikes. You mentioned the pitch mix that they – decided on for Schuster in this start. I thought it was good. Travis Darno behind the plate did a great job of kind of guiding him along. And I know that Sean Murphy rightfully gets a lot of credit for what he does behind the plate. Of course, the throwing arm, the defensive prowess, but you know, Travis Darno has been a steadying force for this Braves pitching staff since signing before the 2020 season. 
He has been. And look, you can't ask for two better catchers for these young pitchers at the road to with their veteran leadership and obviously knowing how to call a game and is tremendous. And talking about Schuster and that slider that he threw, um, you know, 84.1 mile per hour average exit velocity against that slider. It wasn't getting squared up eight whiffs on 19 swings against that slider. I mean, it was a very, very effective pitch for him so again we go back to it i just want to you know finally touch again on the confidence part of this because i think that is absolutely one of the key words of the day when talking yeah. about jared schuster because the braves are going to need him and they're going to need more performances like this i mean i i don't know if you want to say like this because this was just outstanding but to be able to give them yeah you want to get but giving them innings at the very least you know is not something we could count on from what we saw early on with Jared Schuster. But, you know, this has to be a big confidence boost and something the Braves really need going forward with the rotation in the state that it is. Yeah, because there are going to be other questions to answer when it comes to how they're going to figure out the fifth spot in rotation. And it's kind of been that revolving door this year because if you remember, they had to figure it out in spring training. Bryce Elder wasn't the answer at first. Ian Anderson wasn't the answer. Then once Max Free got hurt, Bryce Elder came in and, Kind of gave you that answer. And then by the time you started to feel like this rotation was getting healthy, which by my check is about two weeks ago, you kind of thought that the Braves rotation was going to be this big strength and not have the question marks that they'd had to go through for the first month or so of the season. That's just not the case. With no freed, with no right, it's huge. And a big opportunity as well for Jared Schuster to step in and give the Braves the kind of performances he did on Sunday. I just think, you know, quality start from him or five innings, two runs, six innings, three runs, whatever it looks like, that's going to keep this offense in the game more times than not. Yeah, I mean, that's really what you're looking for. I mean, you hate to say that you have a couple of fifth starters in the rotation right now with, you know, whoever may feel that fifth spot. But if Jared Schuser can give you, like I said, five innings, and really if he can just give you three earned or less than five innings, I think that's enough with this offense on most nights to give you a chance to win. But yeah. obviously we'll take what he did on Sunday. And then to finish it off, Rysel Iglesias, what he did in the ninth inning, I thought it was the best he's looked all season as well. So you talk about the struggles of the bullpen. If he can get going back to that dominant self like we saw last season, uh, Nick Anderson's obviously been great trying to get A.J. Minter going, and you start to get that bullpen the way that we thought it could be, and now you get Schuster stepping up in the rotation. Uh, things will start looking up very quickly for this Braves pitching staff. Yeah, Colin McHugh also helped out on Sunday, tossing a scoreless frame to help the Braves to – beat the Mariners, a good outing for the pitching staff all around. So good outings, plural, but it all started with Jared Schuster. And again, his first major league win, career high, six innings pitched, career high, seven strikeouts. Again, he hasn't had that many starts, but these are the kind of numbers you'd like to be talking about every fifth day. No doubt about it. Now we've got a lot to talk about when it comes to the Braves offense on this day, some key hits, some key performances, and of course a preview of the Dodgers series coming up. But I want to let you know that this episode is brought to you by eBay Motors, who remind you a championship team is about each player being a perfect fit, and it's the same with your vehicle. So for parts that fit, head over to eBay Motors and look for the green check. Stay in the game with eBay Guaranteed Fit. eBayMotors.com. Let's ride. eBay Guaranteed Fit, only available to U.S. customers, eligible items only, and exclusions apply. Uh, as, for, as far as the Braves offense is concerned, Ronald Acuna Jr. just getting things started in the way that he seems to have a knack for in the first inning. He's batting well over 500 now after a leadoff single. He immediately scored on a double from Matt Olson. That's 44 runs scored in 46 games. I did the math so you don't have to. That's a pace for 155 run season. I also ran down the fact that we don't see too many 150 run scored seasons in Major League Baseball these days. It hasn't happened in 23 years. Before that, it had been another 63 years since the last time it happened. So all of that to say, Ronald Acuna Jr. is just doing things that put him on a historical pace or just flat out the best that you're going to see on a daily basis. But how about Matt Olson in this series, Jake? A one for three, a double, a run knocked in. It was Acuna. A run scored himself, also a walk, but five for 11 against Seattle. All five of those hits for extra bases and drove in five runs for the Braves. That's the kind of series I feel like we needed to see from Matt Olson to kind of back up what Acuna has been doing getting on base so much. Yeah, driving in Acuna in all three, uh, to begin all three of these games as well is truly yeah. incredible. So, uh, yeah, what Matt Olson did in this series I think is is big for his confidence as well. It's been kind of the the word of the, the postcast so far, but it's great to see him swinging the bat and taking the ball, driving it the other way in the, in the left center field gap. We saw, saw him do a lot in this series. And, you know, really I go back to the series before in Texas. I know 
in the middle game of that series. It was a rough one for him. But in the other two games of that series, I thought he had some really good swings and was showing signs of coming out of it. And then I thought we saw it continue in this series as well. So having him back, being that bat in the lineup, look, he's going to strike out a lot. He's obviously striking out more than he would like to or anyone would like to see him strike right. out. But he is going to take his walks, and when he's going well, he's going to rack up those extra base hits, get close to 80 again on the season like he did last year. So that's just the type of bat that he is, and great to see him you know, coming in. I know he's putting in the work. You hear all the, you know, everybody talk about the work ethic from Matt Olson. He wants to do better than mm -hmm. he's doing, and the guy has a 916 OPS right now. So, <laughs> I, I mean, it, it's really just you know timing for him and, and getting it back to that. But having Aubrey, Aubrey opportunities out of the gate every time, I mean, that's got to – be a great feeling for Matt Olson. So I, I know there's been some talk about at least on the fans' perspective moving him out of that two hole. But uh, you know when he gets those extra base hits going, you can see him scoring Ronald from first base mm -hmm. just about every time, like we saw in this series. So great to see Matt Olson getting hot again, heating up. I think we saw, saw some positive signs from Austin Riley in this series as well. So you get those two back going, I think this offense is just going to take off and it's going to help out that pitching staff a lot. Yeah, and I know both these guys have been working incredibly hard. I think I mentioned on Friday, I talked to Brian Snitker about it, and he said, look, Matt Olson's work ethic is going to help him hit his way out of this. I talked with Austin Riley, and you can actually hear that whole uh, interview on the new episode of From the Diamond, which will be out soon, wherever you get your podcast as well. There's a shameless plug for that. But Austin really gave me a lot of insight on what it is about his stance that he's been able to kind of pinpoint as a reason why he's not been able to see the results that he's wanted to and I have seen, you know, over the last week, I think some reasons to start to feel like he's figuring it out. And if Matt Olson is figuring it out, these are two guys that are capable of hitting 35 to 40 home runs this year and driving in a boatload of runs. And the Braves are going to need him to, quite obviously. But uh, to go back to your point, I don't really see any way you can change Matt Olson in the two spot. I know the strikeouts, you know, I've used the word alarming because of the pace that they are on for 250 or so of them this year. That obviously could change. And so could Ronald Lacuna's 150 run pace. I mean, that's a, an incredible clip to be on. There's a lot of baseball left to be played. I just don't see another hitter in the Braves lineup that I would swap Matt Olson for in that two spot. That's just a very nice, you know, one-two punch for the Braves, but also very difficult for a pitcher to deal with when you've got somebody as good as Ronald is and then a left-handed threat immediately after that in Matt Olson. Uh, looking down the Braves lineup a little bit more, a nice day for Travis Darno behind the plate we talked about. At the plate, two for four, a home run, a solo shot. George Kirby does not give up very many of those. Uh, first home run of the year for Travis. It came in the sixth inning as an insurance run. Turned out to be pretty handy in a 3-2 win. And uh, again, great for Schuster behind the plate. And I guess we got to talk about Marcelo Zuna again. Uh, one for three, eight-game hitting streak, 16-game on base streak. I mean, this guy is the only player even moderately close to what Ronald Acuna Jr. has done this month from an OPS perspective. Acuna is at 1,098. And Ozuna's at 1,095. That just tells you that he has been putting up the production at a level in which the Braves have not seen in quite some time and are very happy to have, particularly when we're talking about the struggles of a couple of other sluggers trying to get it going. Yeah, and you know, it was really big when the struggles kind of started for Riley and Olsen that Sean Murphy really got going and was heating up. And now, you know, Murphy's maybe regressed a little bit. Obviously, he was on just a torrid streak right. that he had going. But now to have somebody else kind of step up there as well towards the middle bottom of the order, and Ozuna has been a big lift for this offense. He's now got that average up over 200, mm -hmm. uh, which I'm sure he's happy to see every time he looks at the scoreboard when coming to the plate. So, uh, yeah, it's been, you know, a huge for Ozuna to really – uh, bust out this month and help out the offense and become a, a big part of the you talk you know, a big part of the success and he celebrated his 10 year uh, service time the other day as well and that became a big celebration for them so you know feeling like part of the team feeling like you're you're doing something you know Marcel wants that he's had his struggles here both on and off the field but you know he wants to contribute and be a big part of that and he has this month and hopefully it continues. Yeah, and the Braves are going to need it too. I mentioned, you know, or we talked about with Matt Olson, with Austin Riley, kind of having the peaks and valleys that the season can throw at you. I know a lot of folks have been wondering now because it has to just move down the line. We have to get everybody going at the same time, which, by the way, is pretty hard to do. Michael Harris hasn't really made an offensive impact yet this year, but I still look at the sample size. I think it's rather small, but a couple of things that stood out to me, Jake, is he has doubled his walk rate from a year ago. He has cut down his strike rate from a year ago. I know he's not making the hard contact, picking up the extra base hits that he has a season ago, but I'm not necessarily ready to say that Michael Harris is in big trouble at the plate. What's been your read over the first six, seven weeks of the year? 
Yeah, maybe pressed it a little bit. Obviously, I think the injuries have a lot to do with it, the up and down. I think the timing has a lot to do with it. I know you can probably speak more to this than me, but I believe he just took out that knee brace the other day uh, as well. So that's you know something I'm sure hasn't felt natural to him trying to play with that on. So, yeah, I think it is a, a, all of those factors. I'm not worried about him long term. I believe he'll get it going, but – you do see him rolling over to the right side far too often right now. I know it's cliche to say for a lot of hitters, but when he's going right, he's taking the ball the other way to the left center field gap. That's where his power is, and we're just not seeing that a lot this year. So, I, again, I feel like he'll get going. It's timing. Hopefully that back is not a lingering thing. I know that's something that uh, can, can stay with you for quite a while, but hopefully he's fully over that, and now it's just kind of a timing thing, getting the reps and getting back into it. But it's been a struggle for him early on. There's no doubt about that. But great to see, as you pointed out, the fact that at least he is taking his walks, cutting down on his strikeouts, hopefully a sign that he's at least seeing the ball well, recognizing pitches better. Now we just got to see the hits come in. Yeah, you just want to see that quality of the contact improve. And I know that's something that, you know, each and every day, these guys are working hard. I mean, the conversation I had with Austin Riley, that's not unique for, for these guys to come in and try to get things going with Kevin Seitzer and, you know, and, and talk with the Braves, you know, gurus on that side to kind of get some things going. I've seen Chipper Jones wandered around behind the cage a little bit, but as I joked about the other day, you can't ask him to fix everybody's swing. If it was a transitive property, I'm sure somebody would have tapped into that at some point in baseball history. Speaking of one other guy who had a hit that was important in this game, Eddie Rosario, a go-ahead RBI single for Atlanta. That came in, what, the third inning. He was one for three on the day, and I think Eddie's made a few contributions to the Braves' cause uh, over the last month or so. We're going to talk a little bit about what's going on in the next series, which is against the L.A. Dodgers. Game one of three coming up on Monday. Before we do, though, I want to let you know the Braves in first place, five and a half games over Miami and New York. They are now tied, and that is the second best record in baseball at 29 and 17. I also need to tell you about one of our great sponsors. The show is brought to you by So Rare. It's a revolutionary fantasy baseball game and marketplace, transforming fans into owners with officially licensed digital cards featuring players from across all 30 MLB teams. Unlike those other fantasy baseball platforms, so rare managers truly own their fantasy experience. You collect, you buy, you sell, you compete with your player cards against global opponents to win epic rewards and win or lose. You still own your cards and there's no cost to play. Head to so rare.com slash locked on to draft your team of free player cards, set that lineup, and then start competing today to win those rewards. So rare.com slash locked on start playing today. Braves will be back in action on Monday. Game one of three against the Dodgers. Right-hander Charlie Morton on the mound going for a six one of the year. He is 5-3. and three. Gavin Stone, an interesting right-hander on the mound for the L.A. Dodgers. He's looking for his first decision of the year. And, of course, he'd like it to be of the winning variety. But a battle of right-handers in game one, Jake. Yeah, I mean, the Braves, you know, kind of, you know, set it up for this. They pushed Charlie Morton back, have him go in the series. Now you have your three best starters right now going up against the Dodgers, who are the second best team, at least record-wise, in the National League. So it should be a really good series. Hopefully Charlie Morton continues to build on what he's done really over his last four starts. He's looked like the Charlie, Mo Charlie Morton that we are accustomed to seeing. So want to see more of that. Hopefully the Braves get off to a, a good start here in this series. Like I said, two of the best teams in the National League going head-to-head -head right now should be a, another good and tough matchup for the Braves. It will be. This is going to be a tough homestand. They take two out of three from the Seattle Mariners. Now they got the three-game series against the Dodgers, and Freddie Freeman will be back in town for the second time in Dodger Blue. And then you've got the Phillies waiting on the other side of the series. So 10 games, an important homestand for Atlanta. They want to keep that winning way going or winning ways going, and Charlie Morton is looking to keep the very, I think, good string of starts that he's begun to put together for the Braves going as well. Again, he's 5-3 and three on the year as Morton. Gavin Stone with no record as he toes the slab for the L.A. Dodgers. That'll wrap us up here on the Braves Postcast, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. Make sure you subscribe on YouTube, hit the bell to get notified every time we drop a new episode, and make sure you subscribe to Locked On Braves wherever you get your podcast. Once again, Atlanta taking two out of three from the Seattle Mariners with a 3-2 win on Sunday. For Jake Mastriani, I'm Grant McCauley. We will catch you next time here on the Braves Postcast. And until then, so long, everyone.